came to see, right? What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? One and all to the Mike Tech Studios Podcast. Podcast time, everybody. Mike Tech Studios. Episode 32. Goodbye 2020. Hello 2021. A year in review. All right, folks, thanks for checking in to the updated 2020-2021 episode of the Mike Tech Studios podcast. I don't know why I said it that way. It's an update episode, not updated. I didn't redo it. At least yet. Still kind of early. Let's see how it comes out in editing, right? It's your host, Michael Midnight, and uh, we're going into season three. I've decided for the third year of the podcast, we're going to do something just a little bit different. I think last year was different enough for everybody in 2020, but uh, we're going to start numbering our seasons. So this is going to be season three. The episode numbers are not going to change because I think that's just harder to follow. It's like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, season four, episode one. No, it's just, you know where you are season-wise. So with that, we're going to go and highlight a few things that kind of did and didn't happen. But uh, we're going to go down in the show. So I'll just give you a quick highlight and update. We're going to talk about, obviously, the uh, the new season, new artwork, and, and things of that nature. Clearer focus on the podcast and where we're looking to go for 2021, what happened in 2020. Also, with the uh, partner brand recruitmentary that I've been developing and, and, and talking a little bit about that, Pandemic new podcast series, uh, new guests that are coming up and, uh, you know, really just touching on a few things that I think happened to me uh, personally between last year and the time of this recording that would really be beneficial to share, I guess, in, in one way or another. So let's get started, shall we? All right. So first off, the first thing you're really going to notice is we went ahead and just reworked the logo for the podcast. I still want to keep it uh, not too far away from the, the Mike Tech branding itself. That's why we've never, I never really went and did anything too crazy. Uh, I made it kind of its own thing, but I just wanted to get a little bit further away from the business aspect of things. Look, I'm a creative. Uh, this is why I do this. I have creatives around me that um, I've seen do great and amazing things, um, get stuck in the minutia of, you know, the legwork of legalities and paperwork and really just working for nothing. And it pains me to see. And I've had so much experience over the years uh, that I feel really would be beneficial for other people to listen to. I think creatively therapeutic for others to also hear that I'm going through as well. Uh, but, you know, above all, just kind of have a platform of support for the creative. So we're not dipping away from marketing or business or businesses. Uh, that's all still welcome. But the difficulty I have is I have two, as of this time, two main podcasts that I produce. Podcasts, not podcasts. That doesn't make any sense. Podcasts um, that I produce. One is the Mike Tech Studios podcast. It is career. See, I can't even speak today. This is why... 2020 is just, we, we got to get rid of it. 2021 is the new year. It's the great year. All right. So we're leaving this all in. This is all you're going to listen to hear me stumble over everything. <laughs> so, uh, so the podcast. So number one, the Mike Tech Studios podcast. Okay. It's creative content. It's business strategy, marketing focus, consulting, anything of interest that I've been across. Look, we're doing it here. That's what this is about. I want it to be something that you can listen to on your commute to work when that starts becoming a thing again. But even if you're doing it now, yard work, uh, what have you, traveling, you, you plug it in, you download 10 episodes, you binge watch, whatever. If you have interesting topics, Topics, send it, go at MikeTech.tv or podcast at MikeTech.tv. Give some suggestions or if you want us to dig deeper in a topic or a certain guest, please, by all means, comment below if you're listening on YouTube uh, or if your platform of choice allows you to do so, that'd be great. So uh, with that, 
we want to focus a little bit more on the creatives and just being able to, I don't know, just support musicians, creatives, designers, developers, uh, anything that I feel has some sort of creative impact or uh, is just exuberant passion, if you will, uh, into the industry or that vertical. This is really where I want that stuff to live. You know, that's where I want people to be able to tune in. You know, we, we go over more in-depth focuses with like logos or maybe color schemes and stuff like that. And that's great as a creative, but sometimes it's just nice to be able to have that conversation with, you know, folks that have a similar issue, or maybe you're a new band and you're looking to get your music out and it's, you know, pretty solid. That would kind of make sense for what this vibe of show is. It's a fun show. It's interesting. I always try to highlight it. Like if you're listening to, uh, or you're watching Bill Nye, the science guy, um, you know, it would be a fun and interesting way to uh, learn some science, kind of scratch your head and be like, what is it am I watching? But also just overall be entertained and remember the information. And that's essentially what this is all kind of supposed to be. How much RAM do you need in a computer? Is that really a conversation that people have on a daily basis? Uh, it is. And, you know, here's why. Or podcasting. You know, so many questions I see in Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, LinkedIn conversations, Reddit posts. It's it just again and again and again, people starting out with the same questions. So I want to be able to help uh, reach out to them as well. And folks that have also been in the industry and they want to collab and I think they're doing something great, by all means, stop by the show. That's what this is about. Um, you know, that's what the message is for. And, uh, you know, speaking Speaking of, it's actually a good little uh, method of me getting into some of the promos for the upcoming shows. Uh, for those of you who have unreleased content, you know, I do apologize. Uh, the beginning of this year, the ending of last year, you know, was was really uh, hard on me, as it was for most people with the pandemic. Um, I did uh, suffer some issues with my wrist, um, my right wrist, so my, my podcasting wrist, if you will. Um, it just left me kind of... I don't want to say incapacitated, but it's very difficult to operate things when I severely sprained my wrist badly. Thought it might have been a hairline fracture. Not too sure. Um, as of this recording, still trying to... Uh rule that out. So uh, hopefully it's healing. It makes it uh, a little bit more difficult to have things out on time like that. Um, you know, but there's been some really cool uh, guests that are coming up, which is kind of the whole point. And some of them, you know, like I said, I do apologize for uh, if you are listening, uh, you will have your episodes out just you know, kind of hard to do with one hand. Uh, so uh, uh, kind of in order, if you will, uh, we're going to actually have a sleep coach on Lauren. She's a sweetheart. You'll love her. Um, title of the episode, is sleep like a boss, healthy sleep success for insomniacs. Because I don't know about you, uh, I don't sleep too well at night. I don't sleep too well uh, in general. And uh, when I can, I like to just conk out. And uh, Lauren goes through the process of how she came to be a sleep coach, um, healthy steps to really get a, a good night's sleep. I know you would think, you know, hey, we're doing this creative direction, this creative narrative. What does sleep have to do with anything? Sleep's important to everything that you do. And I will tell you uh, any of the stories that you've heard me share share over several years of podcasting, uh, or perhaps as a guest on other episodes. Uh, there have been times in my life where I've been down to maybe three or four hours of sleep a week. And that is catastrophic uh, to getting work done. Sometimes you got to pull all nighters, but after a while, it, it really starts to degradate your life, your mental clarity, your health, and it will have you end up in a hospital like it did for me. So that whole sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, don't do that. That's not cool. And then next stop is going to be motion graphics and creative business direction with uh, somebody who actually reached out. JD, great guy, really great episode. Uh, he's an awesome dude. I'm glad he connected up and reached out. Very excited to uh, share his experiences. Uh, it's weird because we had such similar taste and interests, you know, growing up. So that's, it's a really great episode and uh, podcast and, and, and topically for folks to take a listen to as well. And then successful business strategy with Terry. She's a sweetheart too. You're going to love her. We, we really go into, and it's weird. Like I said, it's really therapeutic when you hear people that are in very similar verticals that are discussing what it is that you do on a daily basis, right? And you're going through the same issues, the same new client troubles and hurdles. And it's just nice to see if they taken in a different direction, um, you know, what it is that you're capable of, of doing. You know, she's more of a media buyer uh, at the time uh, of the story that she's telling, and I never got a chance to really do too much of that. So that's pretty exciting as well. And then followed up with, last but not least, the uncertainty of certain times, preparing for risk with a new uh, fan of the show. And I would almost say a, a friend, hopefully, uh, is a gentleman named Philip. He's actually over in Portugal, or he's from Portugal. I think he's in the uh, UK as of right now. And uh, top 
topically, specifically with his experience, has pandemic-focused experience, which is uh, really interesting if you hear any of the sizzle reels for uh, the new uh, shows and the new guests. It really fits in with the literal uncertain times that we've been going through uh, in 2020 and hopefully are at the finish line and wrapping up uh, for 2021. I'm hoping by summer uh, things will kind of go back to a little bit more to what we are accustomed to uh, and just being a little bit more prepared and a little bit more thankful of those interactions with folks and uh, businesses. I know that I've been severely impacted not being able to be at, you know, trade shows and business meetings and trying to rub elbows with folks. That's where a lot of us uh, get our work. And also, uh, you know, you can make an impression that way. So business cards are great. Emails are wonderful. You know, spamming uh, folks and open rates with your uh, email conversions, all wonderful, all necessity for different size businesses. But sometimes uh, nothing is as good as a general introduction, handshake, and just being at the right place at the right time. The pandemic's kind of killed that for everybody, and it has forced a level playing ground remotely, so that has actually helped some folks out, but it still makes a, a, a difficult uh, time and, you know, sort of standing out. All right, so now that we've touched on that with the great guests, um, you know, again, I've kind of touched on it already, so we can kind of skip over that part, but having a more uh, clear focus and direction for creatives, I really feel that this is a good uh, living space for that. I want to be able to still highlight um, some of the content that I wanted to release last year was a new uh, series segment called News and Gloatworthy. And those are things that were either of interest in the tech, creative worlds, uh, really anything that I think that this demographic group audience listenership would enjoy listening on. You know, for example, Apple has their uh, new M1 chips that are coming out. That'd be a great discussion to have on the podcast. Um, you, you see folks are doing just amazing things online, either, you know, I'm a, uh, a gamer, as a lot of those uh, folks that know me personally, either trading cards uh, or old school. And to see, you know, uh, devices that are, you know, work great. How do they work? Is it worth your money or time? Uh, there's a lot of content creators as well, kind of doing the same thing that, you know, I do tech reviews and things like that. And, and you see a lot of these reviews are the tools worth it, cameras, wires, things like that. Look, I'm no professional. Um, I know it sounds differently when you're listening to this, but you know, what I like to say is I'm not a master level anything. We're always learning. We're always listening. And I always like to try new things. And that's really where this podcast has, you know, uh, come from. It was really just a humble beginning on a very simple setup. Uh, it still kind of is, but the production level has grown because I want it to be the, you know, the, the, the best possible listenership that you can have um, on a great budget. You know, I know a lot of folks I've talked to, you know, they have a certain microphone set up and things like that. If that works for you, great. Uh, working remote in 2020 has really gotten people to think on their feet and really be frugal with the resources and time that they do have. Um, and I think that's been really, really beneficial uh, for you know, success, progress, moving things forward, and just, you know, really being smart with the resources that you have. So as of 2020, News and Gloatworthy obviously was put on pause. I announced that in February and immediately afterwards we were put into a pandemic. So that wasn't really great timing for me. Um, what I also did for recruiter entry uh, was I kind of took a little bit of a pause. It's very difficult to have supporting content for folks looking for work when there were millions and millions and millions of people uh, laid off and not available to uh, work just because the world economy kind of shut down. So it, look, I can't be uh, disingenuine when I'm giving content or support or resources uh, like that. If it's a career content series and there's no career out there, you can't really make the content. It just, it doesn't feel, you know, it didn't feel right. And uh, with that disconnect from the community, you know, there is going to be a, a reboot of sorts uh, also with Recruitment Entry so that we can get that going again. You know, obviously updated content and interaction with uh, the websites, resources, I want to be able to reach out to, you know, schools, communities, organizations that are local to Central Florida and start building up from there. That was the whole point of that platform, those resources and, and, and things like that. I want to be able to have that available to those folks 
um, just even easier and connecting with people like-minded and also that can get students, teachers, candidates, recruiters, career coaches, resume writers, just all of them kind of on the same page, but through the medium of recruitment entry and just being that ample go-to quality resource. And that's a difference that I've been missing with uh, many people that have reached out to that aspect of the show. It has seemed like a sales number for folks, you know, talents, candidates that are looking for work. I'm not ever going to do that to somebody. I want to make sure that it is a good quality fit and that there is authenticity with that interaction and with that experience that you may be missing out on, on, you know, staffing firms, temp agencies, uh, offer those types of things through state funded aid that I've also experienced. And I think it's just an absolute mess and a waste of company funds uh, and also a waste of state funds. So if I can get in there and, you know, really just be the heart and soul of what I believe is change, which is what recruitment entry is, was, and will be, um, that is where it's going to go. And I'm really excited about that because it is literally become, it, it was a mini series for those of you that don't know, it was a mini series on this podcast on a Mike Tech Studios podcast. And then I just transitioned it over to its own thing because it literally just blew up after 90 days. It was insane. I had to turn people away to be guesting on there and the content and it's great. It's just, I'm really, really excited uh, to to build that up more, um, to have all hands on deck, you know, extra resources to really get that to be a much bigger steamrolling engine, you know, like it's going to be. That's going to be a very, very exciting opportunity there. Coming into a couple of things uh, personally, you know, like I said, so I had messed up my wrist earlier this year and it, it, it made it difficult to, or actually at the beginning of January, and it made it very difficult to do what I needed to do. Uh, but the pandemic has really affected people in different different ways that I don't think anybody thought possible. Obviously, a lot of those situations, it, you know, it costs people their lives. It costs people their businesses. It's not really something personally I like to get into topically with this podcast because it's not really the platform to, to dig so deep, but I like to use these update episodes to be topical, you know, for things like that. So with that, you know, a lot of people were kept from their families or they had to make really difficult decisions that I don't think they would have normally made under different circumstances, better circumstances, you know, and a lot of people are, um, I have had some guests where, you know, they're, they're on one side of the continent uh, and their spouse or family is, uh, on the other side of the world. Um, I have a good friend of mine who is actually local in the area. He's a manager for one of the, uh, I guess you could call it casual food, almost like fast food dining locations. And he had a lot of experiences going on with his family. You know, um, his father had passed in Spain um, and his mother was diagnosed with uh, cancer as well. And it really put him in a weird, hard place. Imagine that. Imagine, uh, as most of you, I uh, unfortunately probably went through. Uh, the inability to spend that time uh, with your family, with a loved one, uh, because of the fact of a pandemic requires you to not be able to do so. It's very difficult. What I will say is in that darkness, um, there is the light of which you bring and what you are a part of and what you support and what emanates around you. And no matter what, there's always somebody, whether you know it or not, that's looking up to you. This could be a child. This could be a student. This could be a teacher. This could be a pastor. This could be a coworker. Uh, you don't know who this person is. That's the whole point. But they're looking up to you. And it's really in times like this that you want to make sure to set a good example I know I'm sounding preachy, <laughs> but it's really important because these situations really define who you are as a person. And there may be children that look up to you that you, and a lot of times, you know, like I said, with doing this podcast, look, I'm not a master level podcaster. I like telling story. I like sharing experiences. I like to be able to have a good show, right? But at the end of the day, there's people that are far more professional at this than me. I'm just, you know, an idiot with a microphone, you know? I have some experiences that I want to share. But these experiences go beyond this microphone in this room and this little booth that I'm recording this on. It goes beyond the iPhone or iPod or even Android devices that people are listening to or these Spotify, YouTube, whatever. It's bigger than that. It's going to outlast me. It's going to outlast the moments that I am spending recording this. And in those times, just like this pandemic, it's going to come and go. There's going to be a situation where people are going to be looking up to you. Just be sure that you're doing what you can to just 
pay it forward. Just be mindful of who's around you, who's listening. It means a lot to them, and it definitely will mean so much more to you once you realize that you are that light to them. You are that change. You know, that's what Recruitmentary was about for me. Um, that's what the Mike Tech Studios podcast is as well. I wanted to be able to have that platform where people can go to, have a laugh, enjoy, but also have that dependable relatability where you you know what to expect when you tune in. You know, this is that dedicated reliability factor of content. I personally have had COVID. Um, I don't like to share that too much with folks, uh, probably around... Uh, I want to say maybe April of last year of 2020, um, I did nearly die. Um, I, I struggled to breathe uh, for about uh, five days, three days. I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, I was probably sick for almost uh, two or three weeks. It was a really, really rough experience. And then uh, being around a mixed group of people near the uh, holiday season of 2020, you know, I did take a couple of tests and just, I guess, with the interaction and traffic and where I was and things like that, um, I did test positive again, which that's always fun. Hey, if you can't get it once, get it twice, right? Um, so I'm, I'm my own vaccination now. But... It's really difficult because it is, you are treated, nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> Everybody wants to keep distant. Even if you get a test, they're a little bit worried. Um, there, there is that really level of uncertainty, which, you know, uh, bringing back to uh, Philip's uh, episode that we get to look forward to, this is something that I think is really, you know, enjoyable. So um, I'm thankful that my wrist is, is healing up uh, better. It's going to be kind of messed up for a while. Uh, my breathing is definitely different uh, than, than uh, it was originally, but the show must go on. Hopefully things move along in a positive direction. Be there for the people that you can be. There's people that look up to you that you don't realize and just do what you can and, you know, do the right thing. So Asher to Asher, do the right thing, you know? And then with that, I'd like to really close out this episode with my final thoughts. No, um, with <laughs> my, uh, my focus on basically four quotes that I want you guys to, that are all listening. And I may actually uh, use this uh, last piece as the recruitmentary update specifically because it is really fundamental to what it's about there as well. But four quotes that I think uh, is a good takeaway to start the year, uh, to get a good refresh, to get your mind right. Even if today's the day that you want to have that change, you're starting a fresh week. Uh, you had a terrible day night before you're making a big move, right? A big career move or a physical move. You're moving out of the country, out of the state. Um, you're, you're, you're making a, uh, a big proposal, you know, to a company or maybe to a girl or a guy. Um, they, these are the times that you really need to dig down deep and have that support factor, right? This is a quote from Dan Brown. And it says, history is always written by the winners. When two cultures clash, the loser is obliterated. And the winner writes the history books, books which glorify their own cause and disparage the conquered foe. As Napoleon once said, what is history but a fable agreed upon? So I want you to think about that. Just because people won do not mean, does not mean, will not mean that they are right, that they are correct, or that it is accurate. A lot of the history books are full of false fables, okay? And just because you didn't win out on that pitch, that proposal, that situation, it does not mean that you are wrong. It does not mean that as the only pitch or the only proposal, the only opportunity, just realize and, and, and you want to be right. <laughs> I say, this is something I say all the time. You either want to be right or you want to be happy. And those people that are married or in a relationship, guys, I know the deal. <laughs> Take it away. You're either going to be right and alone. Or you'll be happy and not right. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But um, in, in all seriousness, okay, this is something that I want you to, to keep in mind. All right. So number two. And this is something that's a little bit more simpler, and this is what you can carry on your day to day. A bad set of events and circumstances can lead to poor choices. And I would say at this point, not can, but will. So just keep that in mind. If you see red flags, if you see that your project is failing, hey man, reevaluate it before it's too late. You know, look, evaluate those red flags. They're there for a reason. Notice them the next time you have a project, an opportunity, um, I don't know, a business that failed, a relationship that didn't work out, a marriage that just you can't get through to your spouse, whatever it is, do what you got to do. Number three. So if any of you are familiar with Jordan Belfort, 
He is the wolf of Wall Street. So this is really a uh, it's, it's a good reference from a bad place, but it is something that I literally have pinned on the wall next to me every time that I'm working on something and I keep it in my mind as best as I can. And it goes like this. I want you to back yourself into a corner. Give yourself no choice but to succeed. Let the consequences of failure become so dire and so unthinkable that you'll have no choice but to do whatever it takes to succeed. That's what I'm talking about making today that day for change. Whenever you're listening, whatever it is that you're going through right now, today, make that day of change. A lot of people, if you're not at, you know, you, you don't have that opportunity or, or you don't have that deadline, it's just kind of blase, blase. Hey, whenever it happens, it happens, right? It never gets done. It goes for long durations of time and things remain unfinished. Make today that day. Give yourself an ultimatum that you have to succeed no matter what. Whatever the sacrifice is, whatever it is, you got to give up. Make that happen so that today you say, all right, this is my by April 1st, by June 15th, by December 24th, October 2nd, whatever it is, whatever it is for your day that you are, that's it, you're locked in. And that is something that I look at whenever I'm looking at a deadline where it's late, it's two o'clock in the morning. That stuff is due at four or five in the morning. Got to do it. Got to get it done. Make today that day. Back yourself in that corner for your own success. The only person that's going to win is you. You'll be happy with your results. And last but not least, quote number four is actually from a interesting resource. So I am a fan of the Coach Carter movie. I automatically say yes, sir. And yes, ma'am to a lot of folks. I used to work loading trucks years ago for a delivery company. And one of the drivers that used to be there was an elderly old man, older man. Um, I'm sure if he's listening to this now, he'd be like, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> but... He was a good guy. And every morning he would come in as I'm loading the truck. He's like, good, good, you know, good morning, sir. How are you doing this morning? And he would always greet me the same thing. Yes, sir. What can I do? And I just found a level of respect with that. It was authentic. It was who he was. He raised his sons the same way. Um, you know, his wife loved him and respected him as what he was doing. And um, this is very reminiscent of that respect. So as People know I say yes, sir, to a little, you know, a little two-year-old. I say yes, ma'am, to a 60-year-old. It doesn't matter. That's just what you say. It's just literally ingrained in. It's very hard to just say thank you without saying thank you, sir. You know, it's it's really there. Coach Carter was really trying to drill respect into these gentlemen. You know, they were just they they were good kids. They were growing up. They just had a you know nobody really showed them respect. And he turns around to Tito Cruz as one of the um, one of the players in the game and in the in the movie. And he turns around in the middle of uh, Coach Carter, Sam Jackson's character, turns around and says, "What is your deepest fear?" And Timo didn't know what to say. He didn't really have an answer for Coach. And obviously, Coach was referencing a bigger quote, a bigger problem at hand. So near the end of the movie, um, and this is after the fact that he instills that level of respect into them. You know, and I reference a lot of that in that movie. You know, if you know, yes, sir. No, sir. I'm not a sir. Well, if you're not a sir, then you're a ma'am. And I've said that in my uh, life as well. Has come from that movie. But Timo gets up, and he recites the quote. And this quote was the following: Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Pretty powerful stuff, right? And that's what I'm talking about. When you emanate that type of change and responsibility and just autocracy of respects and, and, and honor around you, your orbit appreciates it. They feel it. They, they bathe in it. The people that look up to you, you don't realize you're giving them permission to succeed as well. So I know it's a little more preachy than I normally do with these types of, you know, update episodes, but I really feel it's needed for all of my podcast content and any of those listening. It's been a hard time for everybody. We're all in this together. It's going to get a little bit more difficult, but again, it will pass. But just do what you can to just keep moving forward in your business, in your life, in your spiritual walk, whatever it is you need to do. 
on your family, your kids, your partner, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife. Make sure your animals are taken care of, you know, pet goldfish, clean the bowl, please. They don't like cloudy water, either do I. Do what you gotta do to do the right thing. Do right, grow, prosper. When you get knocked down, take a minute, collect and come back up, all right? I appreciate you guys listening. Any questions, comments, anything you're interested about, please comment below. Again, podcast at miketech.tv, M-I-K-T-E-K dot TV as in television, or go at miketech.tv. Either way, reach out. Uh, those that are interested in some product reviews, if you have apps or services, um, even if you have anything of interest that's in align with what we do here with the podcast, please send us something. Anyway, I appreciate you guys checking it out. This has been another a little more personal episode of the Mike Tech Studios podcast. Thanks again. Like, share, subscribe. Midnight out.